guys, my name is Shay, and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing Riverdale Season 6, Episode 1, Chapter 96. Welcome to Riverdale. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with Jughead, and he is describing a town that involves nightmares, dreamscapes, superstitions, laws overshadowing the laws of science, and where old traditions die hard. Jughead says that he is going to show us around the town of Riverdale. We start with Tony and Fangs at their apartment. Tony is worried because baby Anthony won't stop crying through the night. She finally puts him down and Fang says that they will call Dr. Colonel Jr. and get him an appointment. We come to Pops and Tabitha is with a realtor who gives her keys to a place. And I'm really, really loving her brown hair this season. It looks so good on her. So cute. Tabitha said that this would be her first time that she will be moving in with the man because she's been guarded to ever make this step before. And the fact that she is making that step with Jughead is so cute. I love it. The realtor says that you just can't ever be too careful. We come to Veronica and Reggie and they are working out and they are talking to a man on their earbuds about the casino at the Coopers. Alice is doing much better and she has Uncle Frank over fixing her sink. Uncle Frank fixes the sink and Alice asks if he wants to stay over. At Archie's, him and Betty are sleeping peacefully in his bedroom. So cute. Archie hears a ticking noise and he wakes up out of his nightmare. Archie tells Betty about his nightmare and that there was a bomb under the bed and that they were living in a town called Riverdale. Betty tells Archie to not watch any more Twilight Marathons before bed. She says that she can make all the bad dreams go away and with some early morning delight and she kisses him. And of course, this doesn't last long because Kev uh, Betty gets a call from Kevin and somehow, some way, couples just have to get her interrupted when they are having a moment. They just have to. <laughs> Kevin shows Betty and Archie a slaughtered deer in the woods. The deer looks like it's to be sacrificed in a ritual and that its blood was used to make symbols on the stone and its heart is missing. Cheryl comes over to them with her girls and demands that they leave because they are trespassing on Thornhill. Betty says that this crime scene and she needs to take the deer for evidence. Cheryl says that they will take the carcass to make stew from its meat, pelt from its hide, and paste from its hooves. Betty mentions that it's a little barbaric, and Cheryl calls her a sad, simple she-child. And I'm just like, if anyone is a sad, simple, deranged she-child, it's you, Cheryl. Like, she is really, really acting cray-cray. And we're only in the premiere, and even though this is like an alternate universe, she's acting just as crazy as she was in reality. So, like, not much has changed. <laughs> But I'm just already ready for the storyline and her character art to be redeemed. Like, come on now. Cheryl likes to call this pain respect to what Mother Earth gives them, if you say so. The girls aim their arrows at them and Kevin, Archie, and Betty leave. Tony and Fangs are in Dr. Colonel Jr. Jr.'s office and he tells them that baby Anthony has colic. He suggests an old folk remedy and that they would have to put a frog in the baby's mouth. That way it will suck the colic right out. Tony is against this and Fangs agrees and Dr. Colonel Jr. suggests the old-fashioned way and tells him to use earplugs. Betty and Archie are helping Tabitha and Jughead move into their new place as the guys are moving the boxes. Betty and Tabitha are having some girl talk. Tabitha doesn't want Betty to feel weird and Betty tells her that she is very happy, genuinely happy, that she and Jughead are taking the steps together. And I really do love and appreciate to see this genuine and mature friendship between, between these two. I'm here for it every time. Tabitha questions Betty about Archie, and Betty says that it feels weird because back in high school, she always wondered which boy she would end up with, Archie or Jughead, and Betty says that the place that she is in right now, it seems like she has a definite answer and gazes at Archie when he walks in the room. And I'm just like, hey, gay, baby. <laughs> the smiles they were giving each other was everything. Veronica is talking with a guy named Cameron about the casino. Cameron doesn't really believe her and says that this is just a distraction until she comes back to New York. Reggie overhears this and Veronica tells Cameron that he is all wrong about this. Reggie asks Veronica to tell him the truth about the casino and Veronica admits that while she did want to go back to Wall Street initially, she is having a ball doing this with him. Reggie doesn't seem to believe her and she tells him that everything that's meant to be finally is. Tabitha is screaming and freaking out because she sees a spider, big mood, <laughs> and Jughead comes over to kill it. And that is literally me every time and any time I see a spider, like no joke. I'm glad to know I'm not alone. Tabitha is superstitious and says that she didn't want him to kill a spider because it's bad luck. Tabitha says that she doesn't want anything to jinx them and Jughead tells her that they are not cursed. At the town hall meeting, Archie is telling everyone about the town reforestation plans. Archie says that with Cheryl making Thornhill a sovereign state, that they lost their supply along with the revenue from the maple syrup. He proposes an idea that they buy and distribute maple saplings and that there will be one per family planted in each yard. He says that the shipment for the saplings came in and that he and Uncle Frank will set up a distribution center outside of Pops. At Thornhill, Cheryl's having dinner with her girls. She mentions that their trees are dry and have withered away and that she believes this is happening because everyone has forgotten the old ways. 
She mentions that they started taking Mother Earth for granted and that she punished them. She demands that they pay tribute to her and return to their old and bloody ways. She mentions first on the agenda is that Archie is trying to steal her maple thunder and that she can't have that. (laughs) It's just funny at this point. It's honestly funny. Betty comes home and Archie gets off the phone with Mary. He mentions what Mary said about if they give it any more thoughts to what she asked of them. Betty says that they, she thought that they decided that marriage wasn't for them. Archie says that Mary was actually asking about the other thing, which is when she's going to have some grandkids. <laughs> Archie says that if it was up to him, that he would want to have kids sooner rather than later. And Betty tells Archie that she has dreamed of starting a family with him since she was in sixth grade, which is the most cutest thing in the world and that with them being so young that there isn't any rush archie agrees and says that they can start right now with letting nature run its course and he sweeps betty off of her feet and is beyond cute when they go upstairs jughead is about to eat cereal and he as he's pouring it there are cockroaches in it which is so disgusting archie and uncle frank are at pops about to distribute the maple saplings and here comes cheryl trying to disrupt and cause chaos like always Archie says that it will be over his dead body, and Cheryl says that it will be over his. Betty's with Dr. Cohen Jr., and he tells her that she doesn't have any viable eggs, and that it will be difficult for her to conceive a child. He mentions that she is the fifth healthy woman to come see him who is barren. Fangs and Tony are cleaning up in the apartment, and baby Anthony is still crying. He mentions that back in the day, serpent mothers would leave their babies and fox forward overnight, and that when they would come back to get them in the morning, they would be sleeping peacefully because they cried the colic out. He mentions that his mother did that with him, and that it actually worked. Veronica surprises Reggie with a bed full of cash and says that this is proof that she does really appreciate him. She mentions how she always fantasizes about doing something like this and they make out on the bed. Uncle Frank and Alice are having dinner and he says that he should go home. Alice notices what he has been doing and she comes right out with it and tells Frank that she finds him attractive and that she likes him and that she would like for him to stay the night. Frank says that while he is flattered, he just can't go there with her. Archie and Betty are talking about possibly adopting a child. Archie mentions that Fred would always tell him that the most fulfilling thing he did was become a father and that he wants that for himself. Betty tells Archie that there's nothing more, nothing more than she wants to have his baby and to become the mother of his child. She tells Archie that she loves him so much and Archie tells her that it'll happen. And they are just so freaking cute, man. And they would just have the most cutest babies. (laughs) The cutest. Tony is in the woods with baby Anthony and Cheryl comes over to her. She mentions that she is trying to cure his colic and Cheryl asks if she can hold him. The second she starts to hold him, baby Anthony immediately stops crying and Cheryl says that it must be the perfume she created in her greenhouse. She offers to give Tony some for a permanent solution, but in exchange for being a witness for her, obviously, when it comes to Archie. Tabitha is up late night and she is screaming and freaking out. Jughead wakes up and Tabitha feels like something was biting her in her sleep. She mentions her nightmare about spiders and Jughead tells her that he just bought new sheets and he comforts his baby. Jughead is in the bathroom washing up early morning and Tabitha comes in and she sees bite marks all over his back. She says that she has them too on her arms and knows for sure that she was getting bitten last night and she wasn't crazy. She starts to think that they were infected and says that she would call an exterminator. Cheryl tells the girls that they are going to make poppets to send a warning. Archie and the guys come to the field where they see the poppets the girls made planted into the ground. Betty comes home and she already knows that her man is going through something because she can see it all over his face. He mentions what Cheryl did and Betty recognizes the poppets and asks if she can use it. Archie agrees and Betty leaves. Veronica is showing Reggie the blueprints of the casino. She mentions that they can christen every place in it and she goes in to kiss Reggie and he curves her. (laughs) Reggie questions Veronica why she forgot to give him his own office. And Veronica replies that she will call the architect in the morning and Reggie tells her that the the picture is worth a thousand words. And I get why Reggie is upset because it, it just almost seems like he's an afterthought when it comes to Veronica. So I get it. Archie is at home washing dishes when he gets a call from Kevin saying that the maple saplings were ripped out of the ground. He comes to the council of four and they are having a meeting with Cheryl. Archie confronts Cheryl and Cheryl says that she is offering an olive branch and inviting them all to Thornhill for a maple festival. Tony informs them that they have all accepted Cheryl's invitation and that they will all be in attendance. Betty is at the office and she is going through old photographs with those markings from earlier on in the episode. She is looking at the pop and she sees the initials RB on the back and says that it stands for Rose Blossom. Betty comes to Thornhill and she questions Cheryl about if she had anything to do with the deer being slaughtered in the woods. Cheryl says that she didn't do that and that Betty tells her that 50 years ago that a drifter was murdered on her property. Uncle Frank walks Alice home and he decides to be honest with her in this moment, which I loved so much. He mentions that he had a wife and a daughter that no one knew about and that they passed. He says that even though he wants it, wants to, 
it's too hard to open up to himself to those feelings again. He does want to. Alice tells him that she understands and asks if it will be okay for them to go to the Maple Festival together. And Frank agrees. And I really appreciated how respectful and understanding Alice was in the scene. Like, it was so sweet and it was so cute. Tabitha gives Cheryl an order of pancakes and Cheryl sees the bite marks on her arm. Tabitha tells Cheryl about their apartment being filled with bugs and that they don't have the money to move. Cheryl offers her a formula, but that it comes with a price. And she says that she's going to need her and Jughead's participation in her maple activities. Betty tells Archie that she visited Cheryl and that she is definitely up to something. He mentions the festival that everyone is attending and that he doesn't want any parts of it. Like, sir, I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go either. Betty says that they won't go both go. But when Cheryl's hosting the event, she will be inside Thornhill doing some good old-fashioned snooping. We love this badass duo. And Archie smirk. When she said that, I was like, yeah, like, look at my baby right there. <laughs> look at her. The Maple Festival is going on and people are catching up a little bit. Tony and Fangs tell Archie and Betty that the baby Anthony had colic, that they found their own remedy for it. Afterwards, they leave. Betty says that the baby Anthony makes her even more excited and ready to have one of their own. She has some baby fever. <laughs> Cheryl and Veronica are catching up and she tells her about Reggie's insecurities. Cheryl says that she might have an idea and that she is just solving everyone's problems, but having her own manipulative motives and agenda behind it, obviously. Jughead comes over to Archie and Betty and he tells Archie that he needs him for the pancake eating contest. Betty tells him that while eyes are on him, she will do some sleuthing. He kisses her goodbye. The guys finish eating the pancakes and Tabitha reads the count. Jughead finished at 116 and Archie's at 119. Jughead is being all weird all of a sudden and tells Archie that he's like a brother to him and that he loves him. Archie is competing in a series of challenges and he's winning everyone. He goes against Reggie and one of, the, one of them and Reggie loses. Afterwards, Reggie's feeling some kind of way and says that he always loses to Archie. And Veronica tells him that after tonight, he won't have to worry about that ever again. The last challenge, Betty decides to go up against Archie. Betty wins the challenge and she is crowned Maple Festival King. I mean, Queen, excuse me. They get a pie to take home and Betty mentions that the poppets are actually fertility dolls. She says that they can put them to use and puts it under their beds to try and make a baby. Archie says that he wants to skip the pie and get straight, straight to dessert dessert. <laughs> Betty gives him a little taste of pie on her fingers and Archie licks it right off and they start to have sex on the dining room table and it was hot, period. <laughs> Archie gets a call from Kevin and Cheryl and others say that they have Betty and that they are doing some kind of ritual on her. Archie rushes over to them and demands Cheryl to not hurt her. Like, he is standing up for his girlfriend, okay? Cheryl says that if they want their maple trees and river, river rail to thrive, the right kind of sacrifice needs to be made. Archie refuses to let Betty be offered as a sacrifice. Betty tells him that she is with child and that she knows for sure that it is a boy. She says that in 25 years, he will be crowned the Maple King, just like his father. Archie is confused, and he's not the only one while watching this. <laughs> Cheryl says that women must bear children while the blood from men is the seed. Cheryl says that Archie will be a martyr for his cause and save the town like he always wanted to do. Veronica knocks out Archie, and they tie him up. When he wakes up, Cheryl stabs Archie and pulls out his heart, which is still beating after he's dead. The episode ends with Jughead narrating. He says that Archie's life ended tonight after 25 years in Riverville. Jughead says that he hopes that we don't leave because they are just getting started. <laughs> To wrap up this video, I'm going to do two good things. First, my thoughts on the episode. I liked it. Like, Riverville is clearly an alternative universe. And it was crazy. It's crazy, as always, in the show. But it's interesting to see what will happen in these next four episodes as this little mini-series. And from what Roberto said, that, that these events in Riverville, it will kind of carry over to the real world of Riverdale. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, second, I'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode. So, favorite scene, Betty and Archie talking about starting a family. It was just adorable. And they would have the cutest kids, like I said. <laughs> favorite quote, I understand by Alice in that beautiful scene with Uncle Frank. Favorite duo, Jughead and Tabitha. Their scenes of them in their new place was really cute in the midst of all the craziness that was going on. Favorite look, Betty in that dress at the Maple Festival. She looked so cute and her hair was adorable. WTF moment, Cheryl and everyone else collectively sacrificing Archie was crazy, but this is clearly not the end for our guy Archie, so he's not dead. He's going to be okay. He will resurrect. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Riverdale. I review other shows like All-American, Good Trouble, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, check out those videos on my channel and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, and see you guys next week.